what is going on guys i'm back with another shipbuilding video today we're going to be looking at the defender class corvette from sator now building the ship was a little bit of a pain because of its front end uh getting that sort of triangular long angle was a little bit of a, of a challenge though i think i managed to get it quite well at first it was um it was really flat, so I had to add some pieces on the bottom of the top to give it a little bit more depth. Um, and I also, the ship originally when I built it was a lot longer too. It felt really out of place. But um, in the end, it turned out really well. And uh, no, it's by far one of my favorite ships, and especially one that in terms of transport. And it, its design, even, even it, if it doesn't even look that close to the actual design, I think alone, the ship looks pretty cool and uh i really do like it it's one of my favorite builds so let's get right into it and start look and give the the inside tour all right so first thing that we enter is the control station um i mainly added this for crew capacity and given that the ship is, is meant to be a forward operating base for a Jedi, it made sense to add it in terms of the actual lore and design. Here is the first companionway. Um, above it are two uh, Deimos braces, which could be replaced with HABs. Add like a workshop or an infirmary or something like that, just to give the ship more. More. Simply more. <laughs> uh, because it is supposed to be, like I said, a forward operating base. You could also do the same thing on the right side companionway, given uh, given its its availability, and um, yeah. So right up this ladder here are two things. There's the living quarters on the left, and then the bridge here on the right. We're gonna start with the bridge. So I chose the Viking cockpit because of its how big it is and how spacious it is, and in terms of the design of the ship, I felt like it was right in terms of having the crew and everything and you at the helm. And it just gave it, a, it, it feels right. It feels like it's the right cockpit for this kind of design. Next up here, we have the computer core, which again, the ship is meant to be a forward operating base. So having a computer core does go in with the design itself. And then above it here is the docker. Unfortunately, with the ship's um, sort of design, it wasn't easy minimizing the maze of the ladders and everything like that. So you can do what you can. Unfortunately, you can't, like we all know, manually place where the ladders should be placed. So here are the living quarters. So first up is the captain's quarters. You guys can obviously change whatever you want and add whatever habs and um like what you want inside completely it's a completely up to you i just chose this because i felt like again it's a forward operating base it should have a captain's quarters living quarters control station computer core and stuff like that so here's the living quarters for the crew allowing them to live and sleep and eat and do whatever they want All right, moving on, let's go straight into the build. So I divided the ship into three parts, allowing me for better and easier in, uh, re uh, rebuilding. So here, these are the ha these are the main habs. I used, uh, it's very fairly simple, not many, but it got the structure done. Here I'm using the NG20 landing gear. The main reason I'm using those is because they have the most thrust out of all the game the entire game and before when i had initially created the build the ship had given its mass required too many landing gear so by using the ng20 landing gear it vastly reduced the amount i needed also they look really good for the design of the ship here um the land pinpoint landing gears that i'm placing on the side here to apply them, all you need to do is use the flipping technique where you place and you flip it and you let it go and it should snap right on. 
I'm using the SD 1800 shield generator given the ship's mass it requires a lot of shield uh, because it only does has 23 63 sorry 63 mobility so it's not too bad it's above 50 percent but it's still pretty slow and the more shield you have the better the ship also has a lot of fuel and a lot of cargo so allowing you to for better transportation and allowing you to jump further within the systems Moving on to the rear side of the ship now. I'm currently using two SAE 5660 engines, mainly to give it mobility. I wanted to originally use one of the, the, the super fast engines, um, I can never remember the names. However, those, I, when I tested it, didn't change the speed at all, um, but also vastly reduced the mobility. So if you're thinking you want more speed, unfortunately I've tested it and it didn't do much. So I'm using so using these engines that I'm currently using now um, help with the increasing its mobility, which is what the ship needs overall, um, given its limitations. Here I'm using the Supernova 2200 engines. The reason being is because they look almost exactly like the engines in the actual design. And um, they are also one of the favorite, my most favorite engines that I like using. But mainly because they look closest to the design itself. Also, they were a lot easier to install compared to the, sh the engines I used originally. Given that the rear and the middle are now complete, I will now connect them both, allowing for a more visual representation of the body. And from here, we will now move on to the front. So the front end, when I had originally created it, was a lot more complex. It was a lot bigger, wider, and really flat. And I really didn't like it uh, when I had originally put it together. So what I did is that I under added some caps, the underbellies and stuff like that, just to give it some more depth because otherwise it would just in a flat line of just Deimos bracers, which would have looked horrible. And, and honestly, it turned out really well. I actually really like the ship now, even though like given it's given that we are limited in what we can do, but I mean like, it's still, it's still incredible what we can manage to do with the with uh, with the designs. And honestly, I didn't expect it to be this good. I well, not this good, but I, I didn't turn, I didn't expect it to turn out this well. That's what I mean. So here I am merging the top part with the cockpit back to the to the actual body um, because I need to I need to actually have it connected to manage to put the rest of it all together here I realized that the cowlings were not uh, in the right place they needed to be further back so to merge that with the wing merge the wing with the shield you just need to do the flipping technique yet again that side is fine there's nothing there and then I put the two cannons in either direction I actually have turrets in every single direction so that they, every direction is covered. Given the ship's low mobility, um, having that 
um, helps it a lot. And also, it re it continues the uptime of continuously firing at the enemy with nonstop. Given that the ship can't move that much. Well, it can, but not as fast as you'd expect. But it's still quite mobile. Here I'm using the S 10ST hauler shield cargo. Um, because it'll... For two reasons. It actually looks exactly like one of the pieces in the actual design of the ship. And uh, it gives it sh some more cargo capacity and shielded cargo. So to get this one to fit, you're going to have to do the snapping technique. So you first need to remove the landing gear if you had already placed it. Take um, a bracer or a hab. Connect it to the bottom one. Then remove the hab or the thing. And then have it duplicate, or you can have it snap on, like I just did there. And then you can freely place place the landing gear back. I use these Hope Tech nose caps um, in representation of the front of the sh of the ship on the on the front end because it has like these lights or whatever. Uh, and to fill that in without having just a flat, straight up piece, I use these caps. And I also and I dyed them blue just to give it a little bit more of that feel. In terms of my weaponry on this ship, there wasn't really any particular reason as, uh, reasoning towards it. What I mainly wanted were some, like guns that would reduce the shield as much as possible, and then to do hull damage. And then the turrets on top of that to support. And I really wanted to keep the guns similar to where they are in the actual design, so on both ends of the, of the front end there. Uh, but unfortunately, I also wanted the ship to be able to survive, so having just those two can those two side cannons wouldn't have been enough. So I added whatever really fit with being able to do high amounts of damage, and it it turned out really well. It did damage is pretty sufficient. Later lasers take them out quite easily, and then the gas cannons finish them off, and then the turrets keep them busy while I'm maneuvering around. And um, yeah, no, it turned out really well. But you can use whatever you want, of course. These are just the choices I made. I mainly just use random weapons. No particular reason to them today in that regard. So there you go. That is the ship completed. Um, overall, its design, even if it doesn't look completely like the actual design of the ship i find it really unique and i really like it and i do enjoy uh, flying it a lot there are two things that i want to point out however first being that the two bracers in the front end here underneath these two caps you can replace them with halves if you wish that way and then they would connect to the companion ways underneath uh, next to the control station where you enter allowing you to deck out the ship a little bit more with some more features like a workshop or infirmary or whatever but i personally didn't want to because i don't really use those those kinds of habs on my ships so but it's uh, entirely up to you there is room for improvement essentially And the second thing I wanted to show you were the engines. So the supernova engines are great aesthetically. They look visually good in terms of the actual design. However, when I originally made the ship, I had used two different engines. Those being the Almond Dunn X300 engines and 
Though they may not look exactly like the ship's design, I do prefer them because one, they give you a little bit more mobility. So from 63, you go up to 69. And 69 in my book is a lot better. Even though it's not that huge of a difference, every little bit counts. Also, I liked how I originally put them to the ship itself. So here I will show you how I managed to put those together. So I like the way I put them because it would merge with multiple parts as if it was actually like fitting and everything like that. So what you have to do first is add the engines, of course. Uh, not that second part. I did that by mistake. The next part you want to do is the Nova cowling. Put it underneath. All you have to do is the flipping technique and it will snap on. Boom. Then you want to put the shroud cap. So what you're going to do first is just flip it and snap it on like that and then duplicate it twice until eventually it goes down like that. And then you can use the Teo cowling cap uh, here if you want. I hadn't put it originally in my design, but given here, it actually looks pretty good. And then all you would have to do is just paint it black and it fits and it gives you more mobility and I actually think it looks uh, it's a little bit nicer plus it also sticks out a little bit near the rear so it doesn't it's not a complete symmetrical with all the engines either plus when you're flying it it actually sounds pretty cool and I really like its design so it's up to you what you want to use either you can use the supernova engines or you can use the Amundun engines I personally in my ship I use the Amundun, but visually, if you want more accuracy, the Supernova engines are, the, are your choice. And that's basically it. There is not much else um, that you can tweak. Of course, you can tweak it uh, any way you want. The ship originally, when I had made it, was even longer, which gave it, gave it even more mask. So. But overall, the design is pretty cool, and I really enjoyed making it. And um, I was really passionate about this one because I really like its design in the in the game. It is um, like playing as a Jedi with it, and having and having it as a mobile operating center was really cool. And it is one of the cooler looking ships in the game, as alongside the smuggler ship and the bounty hunter ship too. But um, yeah, no, it was really fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well too, as much as I have. Because honestly, like these Star Wars ships are from Sator, especially have these very unique designs and um, are not really, they they are surprisingly easy to make in Starfield, given that Starfield has very rectangular and square shaped designs in terms of parts, which is very unfortunate for us. Um, because I did have somebody along uh, who also requested this ship, asked me to make the Fury class for the from the Sith, but unfortunately, given its angle angular shapes and stuff like that, and triangular parts that it has, it's kind of difficult to replicate. But I did manage to make this one, and I really liked how it turned out. So, again, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you have any other requests or any comments, leave them down below. And I'll see you next time.